Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to The Writer's Journey. I'm your host, Lauren Moore, and with me is the bodacious Kayleen Williams. We're two authors on a journey to learn more about writing with you, the audience. Thank you for joining us. And tonight, we're talking about getting your book in front of readers by building up your author platform. Our guest is the USA Today bestselling author of action adventure thrillers and mysteries. He lives in Colorado Springs with his wife, two kids, two dogs, and a tortoise. As a recovering professional marketer, he helps authors determine the next step to take to reach a higher level in their career through his presentations, marketing consulting, and author platform books. Find out more at IndieMastery.com. Nick Thacker, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to see you. I saw you at 20 Books and lately at the Superstars Writing Seminars. I saw your presentation on the eight levels of author mastery, and I thought, let's get you on. And you reached out to me, too. Be like, hey, you do podcasting. Well, <laughs> I've got ideas. And it was like a perfect, perfect situation. So um, tonight we're starting out a series on author tools, and you're the first one to go, the first one up in the series. So thanks for coming on. Well, like I said, thanks for having me. I am excited about this. Um, I've never done it in this kind of environment before as far as talking about something I've talked about. I hope that makes sense. So I'm really leaning on you for uh, for kind of guiding it uh, the right direction. Otherwise, I'll just go off on tangents, I'm sure, as I'm wanting to do. Well, we love organization, but tangents are fun, too. That's where you get some of the <laughs> right, Kayleen? Oh, yeah. Tangents tangents are, are a great thing. I know I take them quite often. So, Nick, if you could go ahead, introduce yourself to the audience, who you are, what you're about, and your mission to support the author community. Oh, man, that's a great way. I love that. Um, that's really what it is about, is supporting the author community. I'm a part of it. Um, I make my full-time living in fiction, and I've done that for... I've, I've written fiction for about five or six years. So I'm not at the level that I want to be. And there's so many authors out there that are way better than me at writing fiction. Um, and somehow a, a lot of times I'm, I'm a step ahead in, in my career that, you know, they would like to be at that point. And so I started thinking about that and putting sort of my marketing hat back on, you know, where I came from in my, my bat, my past. And what I realized was that a lot of authors are focusing on, trying to do all of the things uh -huh. instead of trying to focus on knowing what all the things are and then choosing one, two or four or six of them. And then just really being the best at those. Um, there's and so, so many that, things. There's so many things and there's a new thing every day and it's a shiny new object th syndrome. We all fall for it, but um, the ability to, and that, that's really the skill is, is in knowing not just which ones to focus on, but, but how to actually shut up and focus on one of those things or two of those things until you really know it. Um, and so I thought, you know, hey, if if there's anything I know, it's how to um, hone in on what I want to focus on and try to get really good at that and give it a fair trial uh, as far as marketing right. tactics are concerned. I don't know how to write books very well, I don't think. I'm trying to get better every day. But the point is I'm I'm doing something right. And I think if there's if, if what I'm doing is um, what I'm doing is working and I think what it is is being able to figure out what to focus on. There's always going to be an author ahead of you. Uh, who can teach you something new and there's always going to be an author behind you that you can kind of help along and that you've got something to offer. Uh, but yeah, if you start listening, uh -huh. looking into uh, becoming a, a self-published or traditional author, you're looking for information, you're going to find there's so much information out there, but then what is the right next step for you? That's, that's the whole right. question. You can't do it all. Absolutely. So what's important for you right now? Yes. And I, I love that you say right now, that's really a big part of it. I'm not doing the same things now that I was doing two mm -hmm. years ago or three years ago. And it's not just that the things are changing, uh, which they are, um, but it's, I'm at a different point in my career and I want different things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to trade a few dollars for security every month because I have two little girls. You know, that was, that was different back then where I would probably put a lot more risk toward the things that I wanted to do to, to try out. Um, now I'm not going to spend that much money on taking risks, risks that I'm not sure will pan out. That's just one little way, but you're exactly right. And it's it's right now. What do we want right now? And, and what can we do to get there? So at Superstars, you gave a presentation on the eight levels of author mastery. Uh, where did you come up with those levels? Did you see them in your friends? Did you see them in other authors? How did you figure out what those levels were? Well, 
I started writing the, the, the talk because I knew that there were different levels and I knew that level one is going to look different than whatever the top level is, but I didn't know that there were eight. I didn't know. Uh, I don't necessarily think there are eight. I'm just calling them eight levels. Um, they're totally just mine. Um, but I think at every level, when I started to explain it, people in the room started, okay, I, I get what you're saying. That's kind of a level one thing, right? Um, doing, and for, for example, level one is having a book out that we're approaching like a business now. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily just, I wrote a book and it's poetry and it's on my shelf and that I'm done. It's saying, okay, you know, I wrote a book and, and I can start to make a little bit of money with this. I don't really know how, but I have the book. That's, that's really all level one is. Um, and then as I, as I went on, I, I kept adding levels until I got to the point of like world domination, Michael Anderley level, where I was like, this is sort of the, the pinnacle for what I can see. Um, you know, this guy's everywhere and he's able to do all these things and, and he's got a team in place and that's where they came from. It just kind of filled in the blanks as I went. So you're seeing other authors do like make these levels um, and, and they're being successful in their writing career. Um, you're part of the 20 books group. Yes. Are there any other author groups that you are a part of that show you what those next steps are in people's writing journeys or publishing journeys? You know, I don't know. I wouldn't say there's a group that, that talks about that explicitly. Um, I'm in a lot of author groups, you know, the mastering Amazon ads, Brian Meeks is part of, of course, keystroke medium. Um, I've started one, like it, it's, it's all kind of like we're talking about the same thing without realizing we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and the goal with this talk, the goal with the eight <clears throat> levels, if you will, of author success is again, it's not to say here, I've given you the eight levels. You must put yourself inside of one and then do those things and those things only. It's saying no matter where you are, with what you have right now and the quality of writer you are assuming you're good enough, right? It's pretty low bar, but assuming you can write a book, um, there is something you can do to get to the next level. And, and the way I explain that in the talk is, is, um, you know, it's always good to focus on craft and get better. It's always good to learn dialogue and, and build characters in a better, we can always get better at those things, the subjective art form things. But I think I, I you know, I've I've spoken with a lot of authors who think, that's what they're missing. And that's why their books aren't selling. Um, they must get better at craft. You know, I'm spending $5,000 a month on ads and, and my books just really aren't making more than $5,000 back. So I'm sort of net neutral. It must be my books that are, you know, they're, they're not good enough. And that may be true. Maybe their books are terrible and they should get better. Um, but chances are, especially if you're going to these writing conferences and, and, and you're kind of in it and you know what you're doing um, enough to get there, there's probably something you can do right now that can get you to a net, to the next level in, you know, one, two, 10, 20 months. And that was sort of the purpose of the talk was, Hey, let's, let's, yeah, let's keep learning craft and keep reading books about how to get better at writing in, in the meta of it. But don't forget that there's something you can do now. And it's something that you might not have realized. You know, that is uh, exactly what we were talking about earlier or yesterday. I think it was uh, pre-show. Um, you know, I, I was like, yeah, I understand some science things. And I just spit out this like random scientific equation. I'm like, fuck all if I know what to do with it though. Like, I don't know how to solve this. And yep. Nick's just right. like, oh, well it's this. And then we still need to, you know, you know, I, you know, I totally made that up. I, I have a degree in trombone. So I, okay. I was just <laughs> trying know, to make but like, that. that's, that's the thing is, um, <laughs> so I, believed authors, it. <laughs> I believed it. Um, but see, that's the thing though, is so many authors, they, they know the steps they've heard the steps they've heard 10,000 different ways um, of to say how to, and how to do the same thing. But, you know, how do you account for, you know, pie, you know, how are you supposed to, do you add first? Do you divide first? Um, you know, how do I get to that thing? It's like, I don't know what to do with these steps that are in front of me. Right. Um, so I think, I think that's where like a lot of people, you know, they falter and they, uh, you know, they get nervous and they get, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not depressed, but, uh, God, I'll probably think of it later. Um, but yeah, it's like a paralysis by analysis thing, right? There's yeah. so much out there. Um, we start to look at it all. We, we try a couple of things. We'll do Twitter. And I say do Twitter, meaning like we'll, we'll, we'll tweet once or twice and no book sales came in. So, okay, well I tried Twitter. That didn't work. Um, and then we'll go to Facebook and do the same thing. Then we hear about Instagram. We put a picture of a book cover on, we don't get any sales. Um, again, first of all, as an aside, none of those are fair trials of those platforms. That's just yeah, not a scientific test of how well those work. Yeah. 
Um, but aside from that, you're jumping to so many different things and you're trying out all of the shiny things that there, there's never going to be something that sticks because you don't give it enough time. You don't even know the platform well enough. So you get in this paralysis by analysis situation where you're just sort of stunned into silence and you may still keep writing, but you're not really doing much for your marketing. And that's at least a third of your career, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into what these levels are, uh, can we say that if someone were to follow all these levels up, that they will have success and they'll be able to sell their million copies? That if they just follow these eight levels, and then bam, they'll be able to quit their job and just be a writer full time. Well, sure. I think, um, you know, obviously I, I would never put a dollar sign on how much you're going to sell. I don't think anyone would do that. But the point of, of these levels isn't even just do all these things and then mm -hmm. it's do these things and, and recognize that you're leveling up every time. So no one at level eight, at least, and again, this is all my definition of it, right? But I'm trying to explain it in a way that um, makes it um, palatable, I guess. And so level eight, for example, um, is this like you, you're doing, people are paying you to come speak somewhere. People are paying you just for your time, just to show up and sign things or to talk or just to look pretty. Um, and sure, you've got books, but you know, they're effectively writing themselves. I mean, you're, you're, you're writing a little bit, but you've got co-writers and you've got people you're working with and you're leading a team. You can't get to level eight. You can't get to doing that until you're already doing something else full time. Uh, in the book world. Does that make sense? Like, so there's no way to get from level one to level eight and then all of a sudden appear on the scene as like this, you know, Tony Robbins guru type author. Um, there, there's seven levels in between or six levels in between. And so going through those sometimes, and I, you know, so I don't want to put an income statement on any of them, but for each of them, there's sort of like an income leveling up as well. Um, that's happening. You know, level one, maybe you're making 15 or 20 sales a month. Um, level two, maybe you're making 15 or 20 a day. Um, and so by the time you get to that level eight, you're not really worried about the book sales. You're thinking, well, how many more people in the world are out there that haven't heard of my stuff? And how do I get, how do I get to them? All right. And that's, yeah, that's a really important, <laughs> important uh, piece. Um, in one of our shows, maybe it was last year. I don't even remember now. Um, but we had on um, a tax consultant, you know, and he's like, I mean, I'm talking about this stuff and it's something that you want to like jot down and kind of stick in your back pocket because until you start getting around mm -hmm. making X amount each month or at the end of a fiscal year, you don't want to do this, but it's something to be aware of. Um, something to be aware of. And there's a lot of things like that that are super, super um, important. But if you spend time on them now, when you're at level three and they're level six things, um, you're going to be wasting time. You don't need it. You know, you're, you're being taxed as an LLC, which is a disregarded entity, but your, your CPA is telling you that at some point it's going to be worthwhile to get taxed as an S corp. And this is where I was about a year ago um, or two years ago. And my accountant said, look, you're making that, that kind of the, this number. And, you know, wrote the number down. This is, this is about where you are. You're going to save money on taxes if you do this. Uh, but a year before that, if I would have heard that, I would have thought that was the goal. And it, it's not necessarily the goal. It's just that once I get to that point, then it starts becoming more important to pay attention to some of the other things. So there's externalities that they, they just add to the, um, paralysis by analysis, because if you hear that stuff too early and, and you start trying to focus on it too early, right. you in inevitably end up wasting time on writing more books or whatever the thing in your level is supposed to be. All right. Let's hear what these levels are so we can get like, Ooh, a okay. Yeah, we're going, uh, I'll give you a real, you want to just go through them real quick and just kind of, kind of shotgun them there for you. Yeah. I, so anyone listening and you know, I, we need some best thing. And then, um, I guess you get, you, Lauren, you put some names to them. Um, maybe you can add the names. I don't know. I'm got my screen is all kind of full, but um, I mentioned a little bit at level one. This is, you know, you wrote a book and you've got it on Amazon or a wide or whatever platform you want to sell it through, but you're focusing on selling it. You actually want, yeah, what we have a question. I was going to say, can I, can I do my announcer voice? Well, Ooh. sort of announcer voice for Get the away. levels. All right. Oh, <clears throat> uh, level one books for sale. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Yeah. So level one is you have a books for sale. Uh, and that's really what it is. It's again, the differentiate the differentiator between just not being a, an author and a level one author is maybe both have written a book, but the level one authors are actually focusing on trying to figure out how to sell that book, trying to figure out how to market it better. And, and they're, you know, they're writing another book or whatever the thing is, but they're, they're seeing it more like, Oh, I can make money at this. I don't really know how yet, but I can do it. Um, there's a lot of people that have just written books and they keep them in their back pocket, but they're not really level one authors at this point. 
Yeah, that that to me um, is when I had written my first series, and I'm like, I don't I don't know what genre it goes in. Like I I didn't know genres were such a thing when I first started, and I had to then learn about genres and what the differences mm-hmm. were, and then figure out how my book fit in there so that I could promote it because I couldn't sure. promote it if it if I can't fit it where totally. I'm marketing it. So yeah. yeah, there's people out there that want to read it, and they're gathering somewhere online a lot of times. And you have to find out where that is in order to market it. And that's just understanding the genre, right? Um, and level two is oh. kind of what you're talking about. Um, a- a- after that point, after you realize that genre, you start writing more books in that genre. And you start doing more stuff in that in that one genre. Um, or maybe it's two if you're really crazy and you want to start early and, and split and totally have two different worlds. But the vast majority of us are kind of in one world at this point, one genre. Um, and so level two, oh, sorry, announcer voice. <laughs> I know. I sorry. I, I realized. I forgot. All right. Level two. Other formats. Ooh. So level two is having other formats available. <laughs> so, like I mentioned, that first book. You know, it's probably you know you've 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 got your book on. Um, I keep. I always want to say Create Space, which isn't a thing anymore. KDP <laughs> Print. You know, you've got a print on demand version for paperback. You've got that hardcover you spent way too much money on lo- uploading to Ingram Spark because your mom just had to had it had to have it. Um, but the vast majority of your sales, still probably 15 or 20 a month, are coming from ebook formats. And so level two isn't just having those other formats, but it's about how, how, do you, how can you try to sell those more? How can you try to push those paperbacks? So level two might be where you start looking at doing some local events, conferences or conventions where you can go and just have a table. Works really well for fantasy, sci-fi, that kind of stuff, um, steampunk. Um, it's about getting those formats out through your own website or your mailing list, if you start to build, maybe you've got 10 people on it, but maybe one of those 10 people really does like reading hardcover and they'll pay $35 for, for your hardcover book. Um, so again, it's not just having this stuff. It's not just having a book out. It's having a book, excuse me, and then recognizing that there are other formats you could put it in. And of course, you get to this point and it's uh, translations becomes an option as well. Even if you're doing Babelcube, which doesn't cost anything up front and probably won't sell very much. Um, this is where you're starting to think about those different things. You say, I've written this book and instead of writing a brand new book, how can I take this one book and really exploit all the different opportunities to sell it that, that are possible right now? Well, you've done some work with audio with your book. Um, did that go in the level, the level two thing or is that further down the list? Well, you know, I, I sort of put it on a level two because it's a technically it's a format. So mm-hmm. getting an audiobook um, and then figuring out how to sell it is pretty simple these days. If all if that's all you're focusing on is just having it available and having it for sale, go upload it to ACX and have somebody do a 50-50 split and there's no money spent. Um, and then you get to kind of see how it how it goes. Again, as we talk, I think there's better places for really focusing and homing in on audiobooks um, that, that can fit at different levels a little bit better. I don't know if it was all kind of very convoluted. Um, but I started focusing in on audiobooks early on as a format, but then as I reached sort of the level four, level five area, it was, it was starting to turn, my, my, my career was starting to turn more toward, okay, I can only write X amount of books a year. Mm-hmm. Um, so how can I take these audio books that I've already got in this format and then sort of make them work better for me or make them work harder for me in, in other places? And so, you know, we started, to, we started to get creative with things like, well, turning them into podcasts and then just giving them away for free um, but those, of course, would be like freebie the audiobook, download the book. It's just all audio. Um, it, it, I haven't done it yet, but I do own a couple um, domains like roadtripreads.com and like audios, uh, audio, what is it? Audio mystery, audio thriller, things like that. And my goal with it is to get, and again, I don't have any time to do this, but the goal is to sort of focus on like the road trip people, the, the trucker crowd. Oh, yeah. Driving. And then going through a service like Blip, which has billboards around the world, or at least around the U.S., um, where you can pay for an individual impression on a digital sign. And so flashing them with, not flashing them, but flashing a billboard at them with, um, actually, that may work better. <laughs> like that. Note to self. But, you know, the point is, and Road Trip Reads, I think, has an example of that using my book, which is exclusive, and I shouldn't be allowed to do this. So don't go buy it or anything on that website because it's a totally illegal. But the point was a proof of concept where it would just be a super dead simple website, truckers driving down the road and a, a, a billboard just says, hey, you want a free audiobook? Go mm-hmm. here. And of course, um, texting while driving aside, I think it would be a good way for 
people in that world to just go to a website really quickly and immediately be given, I mean, auto auto plays, that kind of whole thing would, it starts becoming like a, a way to just get your audiobook into other people's hands. Um, mm-hmm. To the end of the audiobook, it says, hey, thanks for listening. There's a whole series. If you just want to buy it, you can do that right here. Um, and anyway, so, so that's, that's kind of, of like the, the, the lost leader in the audiobook world. Then it's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's like I said, a freebie. It's like the same version of giving, you know, I give away three of my, my books away for totally for free, but again, they're also for sale. So I'm not really losing money, but I am gaining email subscribers, which is to me way more important. Um, so yeah, so audiobooks as a, as just a format to have, sure. That's like a level two thing. But then when you start thinking of it as how can I really exploit this format for all it's worth? Is there anything I'm missing? Is there any kind of creative thing that's not being done? And then if I have time and money, I can go test that. And I'm at the point right now where I don't have the time and money to test it, but that's my plan. That's what I want to do with audiobooks specifically. Uh, of course, I also run Sonata and Scribe uh, websites currently down um, for being transferred over to a new server. But you know, that's doing audio for books, not um, as like a um, narrator stuff, but actual soundtracks. Um, like I did a soundtrack for Anderley. I did um, both Mallory Cooper's. He's got a new one coming out here pretty soon, and I scored those and composed them. And he's using or, or, um, Michael Anderley is using that to like sell as just an additional cool thing, um, mm-hmm. which would totally fit like a level six, level seven sort of thing. Oh yeah, getting music for your books, man. That's like a, yeah, and it's it's like a movie score, you know. But you have to be at a certain point for that to make sense in your career. Um, yeah, I would not be doing that right now. <laughs> it's not cheap. And, and I mean, I'm actually, I'm, there's, I mean, it's a ton of work. And so it's like $4,500 for these whole scores to be done. Um, I think they sound incredible and they usually do too. But the whole point is the time it takes to create that doesn't make sense for a level one, two, three, or four author typically um, because they're probably not going to bring in a ton of money, at least up front or until you have that huge audience, which they do. Yeah. yeah I mean, you, yeah, once you get into those creative, parts that's when you have an audience base there's there's fan there's a fandom out there and then you're like hey we've got ties anyone want ties who likes ties and then you start putting out ties you know so yeah all right so yeah level three going wide going wide and this is one where i i sort of wanted to make sure no one thought i was telling them to you know okay now you're with amazon exclusively now it's time to go wide (laughs) it's really just about making sure that your books are available as in, in, many, in as many places as possible. So having the formats is great, but if you're only selling your audiobook, for example, through Audible, you, you know, and you're not exclusive to, to Audible, go find out how to sell that through somewhere else as well. Um, your paperbacks don't have to be exclusive anywhere. So go fight, figure out how to sell those on your website. Um, and, and that was sort of a recurring theme in, in the book, Platform Mastery, because the whole book is about building a website that's not just a website, but it's actually your platform online. And so level three is where that really becomes important. Um, you have a website that can theoretically sell anything you want. Um, maybe your eBooks like mine are all exclusive to Amazon. So you don't want to be selling those on your website, but you can absolutely sell your paperback books, hardcover books, signed copies. That um, is a all, really, all really things. super duper, duper good point. Just because you're exclusive KU eBook digital does not mean every other platform can only be on Amazon. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Audible, like ACX, that whole thing, there is a lot of exclusivity there. So typically audio and ebook for me are going to be sold on Amazon and that's it or Audible and that's it. Um, but I'm still going to have, again, I'm going to try to hack that as much as I can. Right. So I'll take that audio book and I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to find a way to like make a sampler pack or something, you know, go against any terms of service. And then I'm gonna try to sell that or give it away or something that can just expand that, you know, that, that asset I've already created. I've already put the work and time and money into it. It's done. Can I put a little bit more effort in and make it something completely different that either gets me new readership or new listenership or sales. And that's what level three is all about is going wide in that, in that regard. Now for authors who are new, what's, what is going wide? What does that mean? And why would you be careful before jumping into it? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. I should have said that uh, up front. Um, there's sort of a going wide means something in the author community. Um, it's when your book, your ebook specifically is available in all these different stores around the world, like iBooks or Kobo or, you know, uh, whatever the Rakuten or that other one, you know, there are all these other ones that are still around besides Amazon or including Amazon. Whereas being exclusive to Amazon means you're only, your ebook is only available in Amazon stores worldwide. And why would you want to be exclusive to Amazon? 
Amazon pays a lot of money to um, their authors. Typically, the percentage is higher than other places. They mm -hmm. also have more people buying books at Amazon. So a lot of people go to Amazon because it's 80% of their income anyway, and they can make more money if they're exclusive. They get a, a better royalty rate, 70% instead of the 35 or whatever. Um, and they offer special promos. You know, you've got Kindle countdown deals you can use, uh, free promo days in a 90-day window, that kind of stuff. And it's all only if you're exclusive to Amazon um, to their, their whole plan. Or Kindle Unlimited. Kindle Unlimited, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, what do they lock you into if you want to do Kindle Unlimited so people can like get, read your book and get, give you page reads as opposed to buying the book? Yeah, um, so th and that's really what it is, is instead of getting sales, you will still get sales. The people that aren't in Kindle Unlimited, the readers who aren't, can still buy your book and you'll still get paid on those. Um, but you'll get paid as... And as an author, you'll get paid for page every page that's read of one of your books in the program. And the program's a 90-day exclusivity term. You can not renew it if you want, or you can just continue it. But they're pretty strict about staying in there for 90 days um, mm -hmm. at a time. I've always been exclusive. So I'm actually, I probably know very little about the whole wide world, the whole wide world, the World Wide Web. Um, I just don't have a personal experience with it. And so there are great aggregate services like draft to digital out there that do some really incredible stuff um, if you're wide. But if you're not, if you just focus on Amazon, um, you do also get some benefits as well in being able to use their promos. And so I do, oh. if you're a new author, how can you like figure out which one should I do? Stay in Kindle Unlimited or try to go wide? Well, this kind of goes back to some of the level stuff. This may be some of just my experience talking, but my recommendation is always to start exclusive with Amazon. Mm -hmm. Again, you're talking 90 days. It's three months. Um, it's not going to kill you. And you may find that you're able to do pretty well in, in Amazon early on. And at some point, if you want to have the, if you want to go test the wide market, um, I typically would say one you know, wait until you've got more than one book out. So your entire book career doesn't just plummet while everything is wide. And then, you know, you know what I mean? So I, I recommend that, but then again, I, that's how I started. I think i I know people who also started the opposite way and they were wide first. Um, and then after some time, they decided to test Kindle Unlimited and they went exclusive with that book or books and things worked really well. And then they went exclusive forever. But it really just depends on on your career. I would probably guess that there's some genre um, specifics too, like certain genres sell better outside of Kindle and all that. But again, I don't really know. So yeah, my I was, is to test one. Yeah, I was, I was going to say um, first starting out, you don't know the fire hose that you're getting ready to get into being exclusive can definitely, you know, mitigate how much holy crap in your face is going on. Um, Cause yes, there was a point yeah. where, yeah, I didn't do, I got out of KU just to see what going wide was like, but I didn't, I didn't have a very good, you know, understanding on self-marketing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Amazon's no longer marketing my book for me. I have to do that because it's now everywhere and I don't know how to do that. And I was just like, <gasps> right. So I went back to KU, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll learn right. more first. <laughs> totally. And I mean, even if, even without the marketing, you've got, you know, five to 10 different dashboards you're now looking at. If you go yeah. direct with each of these stores that you're tracking and checking and being upset about not giving you enough money, <laughs> just a lot of stuff. And that's where, again, where an aggregate comes in like draft to digital is great because you're paying them 10% of all your royalties, but it's all in one place. Um, but you're exactly right. When you get to the point where you're trying to market, you know, if you've got the sales and the clout, you can usually ask these um, other places, you know, Hey, can I be in a first reads program or can I be your, you're doing, they do these all the time and they're looking for new content all the time. But if you're just starting out with one book, it's going to be a little bit harder to do that. And it's something to manage. And you probably at that point don't have a VA or someone to help you figure all that stuff out. Rick Partlow says that, um, oh, there it go. Oh yeah. I can't see all those comments. So you'll have to just to get a book club if you're wide. Oh, no, yeah, okay. Yeah. Rick, I mean, that's like, yeah. Rick, I'm just, I feel like he didn't read my book that um, I sent him an art copy to. Actually, I don't know if I did. Sorry, Rick, I'll send you an article. Oh, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> um, thanks, Rick. It's an aggregator, not an aggregate. The world had, was confused. I'm glad you clarified that. Now we know. Um, you know what I meant, Rick. Come on. You're just trying to break my chain here. Uh, I, I just put the finishing touches on um, the second book in the series. It's called BookBub Mastery. And I have a whole section that's like at least three sentences long about why it's not true um, that it's easier to get a BookBub if you're wide. I'll just leave it at there. Rick, I love you. 
I know you're just uh, I know you're just giving me giving me crap. I'll never let you move on. Um, does it only apply to the ebook and then not to like paperback? Yes. Um, KU is, is only for ebooks. I mean, as far mm -hmm. as I know, unless someone, unless Rick wants to come and correct me, um, it's only for ebooks, paperbacks, hardcovers, you do whatever you want. Um, and you can sell them wherever you want. If you do KDP print with your paperback, um, I think there's still like an expanded distribution, which gets you into some catalog that was probably published in 1958 and no one ever reads, but it's there, you know, um, I don't know for sure. Cause I don't really pay attention to this, but I know I, I do a lot of my hardcover stuff through lightning source, which is what Ingram spark is part of. I, I think Ingram spark is far easier and most people should just do that. Um, but I've got a publisher account with lightning source international and they do, um, send out all my books to like all the Barnes and Noble catalogs and things like that, which so basically do, means somebody could order it in the store, but you know, it's never going to be cover out in the front of the bookstore. I do want to add to that. Um, getting going through KDP for your paperback, they are providing you an ISBN number. Now, if you go to lightning source Ingram spark, you are yeah. going to have to purchase a, a, a second number. So it's going to be the same book that has two different ISBN numbers. If you do it that way through right. Ingram spark, because you cannot use the free one that Amazon gives you right. in Ingram, you will go against the TOS and you'll just have so many legal problems. It's not funny. <laughs> you know, and, and if you get the point where you're really focusing on going wide in that way, um, yeah, I'm with you. I don't think there's, it makes, a, it makes a lot of sense to just go and buy a block of ISBNs. Yeah, definitely. Get a block. More than one. Yeah. Don't just get one. It's a hundred bucks. Right. But if you get 10, it's like what, 200 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, there's the at down. one point there was like a hundred of them for maybe $400. Yeah. Right. Do to snag them, man. If you have the them, extra yeah. money, snag them. Yeah. And, and I don't know. Them? Um, I don't think, well, the, when you buy them, don't they assign your imprint to those ISBN? It's, it's like a publisher imprint. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if someone's willing to be basically you publishing them kind of mm -hmm. a thing, then right. I guess so. But you can't technically be like sell. Right. Like what I used to do, um, which again, totally breaks the terms of service, but I like to live life on the edge, um, was I would go to Lulu for the hardcover and just get the free ISBN from them and then take it over to Ingram Spark. So I would basically create the book in Lulu and then save it. And that ISBN is now registered and Ingram spark will even pick it up and see that. And it would fill in all the information. Like it's six by nine. It's, you know, a matte finish cover, whatever. And all the details would be there, the page count. Um, but my book was technically published by Lulu because that was where I, where I got the ISBN from. Um, so it didn't matter because I was just doing it again for my mom who he, she thinks she has all my books. She's got like four books and she's like, I got your whole collection. Really cute. I'm like, I have 30 something books, but you know, <laughs> like you're adorable. You can't afford my, my whole collection. Um, hey, if she won't buy them, who, who, who will? Who will? <laughs> you to get your mom. Oh, okay. I guess it's fair. I guess I should probably give her all my books. <laughs> <laughs> she did kind of make that. So she did. It's kind of her fault that I'm a writer. Yeah. All right, we're going to level four, or do we do want to do do level four? Okay, all right, level four special editions. Dun, dun, Wait, dun. did I just do that one? No, okay. no, I think we're on level four. Yeah, yep. that's what I've got on my notes over here. My right. three assistants are over there telling me I'm on level four now. So, all right, level four assistants are dogs. Continue. Um, special editions is very similar to the level three, which I just forgot the title of, um, because you're still expanding. Expanding your reach, you're, you're getting more exposure, distribution, and getting markets. But I've separated it out because now it's not just these same books that you're asking your readers to purchase. They're more expensive versions of the same books. Um, they're special in some way. And so the creative part is about figuring out how to make them special in some way. Um, the obvious one is like signed versions, right? If you have a hardcover version, now you can sell that same thing. Again, there's no exclusivity with hardcovers anywhere. So if you have a print on demand hardcover through Ingram spark or Lulu or whatever you're using, um, you can now get on your, again, in level two or three, you should have built that website. I was telling you to do. Um, now you can go on that website and set up a signed copy of that book. That's maybe five or $10 more. Or if you're really cocky, 50 bucks more. Um, Cause it's going to be worth something on eBay one day. I don't know. But the point is you get to be creative about your special editions. So you can sell that signed copy or, Maybe um, a cover that you had two different covers designed and you only ever used one of them. Put that second cover on that hardcover book and make it a special edition, you know, cover. 
um, and give credit to that artist that did it or whatever the case is gold lined pages. Maybe you sit there with like a paintbrush and just like paint gold and whatever, however you have to do it. You can make all this stuff happen. Um, at one point I did, um, I don't think I have it anymore. It was before I relaunched a book. My the very first book I wrote was called the golden crystal and it sounds real fantasy and it's not. And so I later relaunched it as the Atlantis stone, but it's the same book. Um, originally what I did to make it special was I would sign it and then I would wrap it in like a butcher paper type stuff and then put like twine around the whole thing to make it look like an archeological like package kind of thing. It cost nice. me nothing, right? That costs nothing to do, but you better believe the fans were excited to get that in the mail instead of just the book that they ordered. Um, now or like the time, Milo and Atlantis. It, oh my God. I love finding. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. you're welcome. Right. I mean, that's mm -hmm. instantly what I saw. I was like, oh, yes, yeah, it's exactly what it is. Right. It, and that's probably actually where I got the inspiration from. Cause my wife and I are huge Disney freaks. So, um, that's exactly what it is. And at the time, I don't think I sold it as anything that cost. It wasn't special. It was just, that was how I sent people the book. Um, but as you, as you go on and you get to this level, you're trying to get to level four, you start thinking in those terms, right? Can I actually, instead of giving an audiobook download code to people, can I just like print copies of a CD with the audio or DVD with the audio on it or whatever? I don't know what people use these days and like send them or maybe a flash drive. Those are cheap with all the files on there. And, um, that kind of breaks some exclusivity stuff, but there's really no way they could tell. So I'm, I'm not telling you to do that, but being creative about it is kind of the goal, right? It's it, how can we I, at, make, we at keystroke medium do not condone any of the condone things currently being said, any of the illegal things Nick's talking about. Right. I didn't even talk about in level three, going into the bookstore with your hardcover book that has a real ISBN and throwing it on the shelf and then trying to buy it. And then having Barnes and Noble realize that their stock is now negative one. And so they order a bunch of copies of your book. I didn't even talk about that. That's not illegal though. We're giving them money, but whatever. The point is level four is all about getting creative with the stuff you've already got and turning it into different things. Uh, the example I used in the, the talk I gave at superstars was I've got this Mason Dixon series and he's a bartender and an assassin naturally. Um, and he, uh, he, all he wants in life is to make classy drinks for classy people. But in order to pay off his bar, he decides he has to kill people. So that's how he makes his money naturally. Um, and so I, sorry, Mason, one one. Mason Dixon, his, uh, the main character, he, uh, he writes a book um, and it's, it's a recipe book. It's just his drink recipes. These are his classy drinks. So I actually have his recipe book. It's up there. Yeah, there it is. See, I love that kind of stuff. Like you, you have this whole expansive world and you make maps and you put out a map book and, Yes. So that's the idea, right? So this is, it's just literal like recipes. Um, and, and they're all Mason's recipes, right? But these are, and they're, they're really good recipes. If I do say so myself, I've drank all of them for testing purposes. Um, well, you would have to, you have to, you know? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's just an idea of, that's kind of a, a way or an example of, of this level four thinking is just how can you take the stuff you've already spent time and money and, you know, effort on and then selling it in special ways. And this kind of doesn't count because, you, you know, I, Mason Dixon, had to do a lot of work to produce it. But the whole point is it's just it wouldn't make sense outside of that whole world anyway. But see, but that's also for your fandom. You know, you're at level four now. You've definitely got a fan base. They they want more of your character. Right. This is a quirk of his. He he's a bartender. He has all these recipes. Like, how fantastic is it for a reader to purchase a book of his recipes and be like, yeah, I'm in Thacker's world now. Right? right. I mean, right. All that drinking so. was tax deductible. Walt. So I just found the <laughs> comment section. So I'm, I'm just going to talk. That's awesome. Yeah. Totally tax deductible. Um, unfortunately, everything that I drank didn't have to go out and buy brand new stuff for most of it, but uh, it absolutely was tax deductible. Nice. Um, See, there you go. Creative thinking. Here's your box people there you go think outside the box make it make it a swirly circle yeah or make the box bigger you know there you go make your own box mm -hmm. i like that the ideas expressed by the guest is not necessarily those of the host or management of keystroke medium there we go it, it perfect jay cliff it really is though no, it's not. <laughs> all right we're gonna take a quick break for a uh book spotlight and then we're gonna jump back into level five bundles and add-ons but for now Book Spotlight. This week's Book Spotlight is on Platform Mastery, an indie oh, author mastery guide by that. Nick Thacker. No, he's over here. What's a platform? How do I build it? And what the bleep do I do with it when I have one? Well done, Mr. Thacker. Well done indeed. 
Michael Anderle, CEO, LMBPN Publishing, seven-figure author, creator, 20 books to 50K. TM. Build your platform, launch your career. Most authors have a website. Few authors have a true platform. No matter where you are in your author career, just starting out with a single book, or you're a five-figure per-month author of multiple series, there's another level to reach. Most of us want to reach that next level. Most of us have no idea how to do that. It starts with a platform, a true online presence that allows you to level up at will. In Platform Mastery, you'll learn the actual steps to building a true author platform, the difference between a website and a platform, how to build a home base and set up your outposts, how to level up in your author career, what's your ceiling, and how can you blow past it? The Platform Mastery full-time USA Today best-selling author Nick Thacker breaks down what it means to launch an author platform <laughs> and what it means to use it to reach the next level. No matter where you are today, there is something you can do right now to get it to where you want to be. You don't need more books, although that can help. You don't need to be a better writer, but that could help too. You need a better platform, a plan of attack, a belief that you can reach the next level. Platform mastery is that plan, a solid offering that has covered all the bases. Authors will find it helpful. Brian Meeks, author of Mastering Amazon Ads, an author's guide. This is the advice people pay thousands to hunt for, and you may never find treasure this book. Kevin Tumlison, Director of Marketing for draft to digital Find it here at this thing that we are now going to post that is a clickable link of doom. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to pay you to read all of my book descriptions. I am available. And I just don't know where <laughs> I put them, but I just want to listen to them all night long. <laughs> I am available yeah. for you. Yeah, go find it there. I mean, um, I, I wrote that actually a long time ago, and it was a different book. I mean, I re totally re re rewrote it recently, but I was working on this BookBub book, and I realized that there's so much in there that I was talking about that has nothing to do with BookBub. <laughs> Because it requires some kind of pre pre stuff, you know, preemptive stuff, and so um, that's where platform mastery came from. That's what I started to realize was in my head as if I can give anything back to the author community, it's this idea that there are things you can do right now that aren't writing more books or writing better books. While those are very important, um, there's things you can do that you're probably not even considering, and to go test those and try those, I think, is a really great way to level up. Yeah. Every time I hear people talking about what they're doing next with their book, I'm just like, holy crap, it's so simple. And I had no idea. So with that, level five, bundles and add-ons. Mm, bundles and add-ons. These sound so corporate and fun, don't they? Um, they're, they're really, this is like the most boring level, but it's so necessary because it's when you start to think in terms of a merchandiser or like a product manager rather than just as a marketer, um, so it's not really about finding new readers. It's sort of saying, hey, readers who have already bought these special editions and ebooks and audiobooks, now you can buy three of them all together and save some money. And people love savings and people love sales. Uh, that's just the way it is. So that's what level five is all about. It's the corporate level. It's the one where you're thinking in terms of bundling your products together. You know, if I got a follow up book, this is where I'm starting to say, I'm really lazy. I've already written two recipe books. I'm going to bundle them together. Boom. Save you five bucks. Here you go. Sell it. It's super easy to set up. Um, Add-ons are the same way. They're literally just a recommendations engine. Um, without getting into the technology, this is super easy to do with Shopify or what I use is WooCommerce using on, on WordPress. Um, but again, this is all on your own platform. However, you know, there are bundles you can sell on Amazon. You know, we all have seen the ebook box sets and things like that. That's just another way of bundling books you've already already written. Um, for my first few books, I worked with the same narrator and he already had recorded those three books. Mm -hmm. So when we made a box set, I had an audio book made in like two days and all of a sudden it's already, done. <laughs> it's already done. And now it's being sold for a higher price, which means, and this is sort of a little, um, hack, um, those promo codes that they started giving us through ACX, they pay you every time someone redeems those codes. It's 
forty percent of the list price divided by two if you're a fifty fifty royalty split with your narrator like I am. Um, hundred codes for the U.S., hundred codes for the U.K. So the point is, all three of these books that each have about two hundred codes, we can you know get paid for. Um, now we've got a whole box set that's at a higher sales price, so we get forty percent of a higher price, and there's two hundred more codes. So just thinking in terms of like merchandising like that, there's just a way of getting more of your stuff out into the world. And again, what I want you to hear, authors, is this isn't suffering any quality. You know, your your quality isn't going down at all. But these are the same books you've already written. Now you're yeah. just packaging in different ways. Um, and, yeah, and there's a little so many other different types of. Uh, sorry, I mean the. No, like, I was talk fine. Go ahead. But, yeah. Um, you know, there's readers that just want to get that first book. They want to test it out. They want to just listen to it. They want to just read it. You know, and then there's others that are like, I ain't reading anything until I get at least a three book bundle because that's I am a whale reader and I want them all. So once you yeah, you're able to get up to that bundling and add on now you've you've unlocked a whole new level of readership. So, yeah, you're definitely not diminishing your amplifying. Yes, that's exactly the way to think about it is you're amplifying. And the question um, Bard asks is why wait till level five for bundles? Mainly because I was probably drinking when I wrote this talk, but uh, realistically, man, like, you know, you're, you're not able to bundle two books. I mean, you can technically, if you want to be a jerk about it, I think didn't George R. R. Martin or his publisher, like put, he did some weird thing with bundles and somebody can probably come in and tell me, cause I don't actually like reading. Um, I watched this TV series cause I, I don't have time. Um, but somebody, he did something stupid with his bundles, but in, in, unless you're doing something like that, um, you really shouldn't be focusing on selling these bundles and add-ons and things like that until you've got kind of a world of stuff to sell. It's just the way I think about it. Um, I'd rather write another book and get more books out into my universe than, um, than just really double down on a bundle. It doesn't take that much time or effort or energy to create the bundle. Of course it's, it's already the work. Most of the work is all, all already done. Um, but it also doesn't really help you to just throw a bundle out there and have it do nothing. Um, so my reasoning behind it was, Again, and think of it from the terms of a customer, right? If they're going to come buy a bundle of your books, um, I would feel much better as a cut as a reader. And this is where I, I again, I, I should look it up because I can't remember the details, but I wanted to go and buy a bundle of someone's books, um, but it wasn't available. So I just bought all three of the books. And then a, a day later, after the third book launched, a bundle comes out. It's kind of like, well, man, that sucks. I wish I would have not bought those three books. You know, so I kind of give it some time in between when you come up with a bundle of those and um, and yeah, in each step, you kind of want to, you, you don't want to forget your readers, right? So, you know, sales that you might have, bundling that you might have, those people who first bought the book, you definitely don't want to diminish the, that, that relationship that they have purchased and they're now reading. If, you know, you've launched, launched, launched bundle, you know, and this is all absolutely. happening in a month. Right. That's I mean, the people point, next yeah. time you do a launch, they're like, well, I'm just going to wait a month for the bundle to come out. You 100%. have completely destroyed those single book sales. Absolutely. Yeah. You very quickly can lose some goodwill if, if you're training your reader. Again, then this is where it becomes a race to the bottom that everyone's worried about. I don't think publishing, you know, self-publishing, indie publishing is a race to the bottom inherently. It's when we say, well, you know what? Hell, I'm not making any sales. I'm just going to make everything free. Well, that's not going to help you or the indie author community. You know, I think what you're saying is hundred percent true. And I didn't go into it at the beginning of the talk, but that was essentially the whole point of all this is knowing your readers and building those relationships with the real people. They're real dudes or dudettes like you who are, are reading your stuff and they're spending a lot of time with you, even if you don't really feel that because they're doing it through your books. And so having that relationship as you go on, as you sell all these, and I didn't even mention this, but as you're building that platform and making sales, email it using those emails wisely and you're, being, you're able to send emails to them and say, Hey, I've got this bundle that just came out. I know you've read the first three books and thank you so much for buying them. I'm doing this kind of bundle through my own platform as well as Amazon. So sure. You can go over there and buy that directly through Amazon, or here's a coupon code. The book's not exclusive. So I can sell you the ebook here if you'll do it for 10% off on my website and save some money. And if the readers are true fans, sometimes they'll do that. Sometimes they'll just be like, yeah, I, I like your stuff. Even though I've already read these three books, I'll, I'll buy the bundle. You know, when people have friends be like, hey, dude, my author that yep. I super love, they just did like bundled all three of the books and it's 10% up. Just go here and do it. Do it now. You know, yep. so that happens. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, where I've seen bundles used the most is with the rapid rapid release strategies. So an author will write three books ahead of time and then have a release 
schedule all planned out to release the books, you know, every four weeks or so, and then a bundle at the end. <clears throat> so they'll release each book and then, yeah, and, then yeah. and, and uh, Michael Anderley at the superstars seminars, he was talking about flipping that just experimenting with flipping that and releasing a bundle first and then the individual books one at a time. Oh, yeah, totally. And seeing how that would affect sales. And we kind of tested the same thing. Some thriller authors that are in the Slack group with me, um, we did an anthology of just free short stories. And some mm -hmm. of the guys are now turning those into some full length stuff, um, which again, we all want to do, but nobody has time for it. But that's kind of the idea is it do something up front that's free, but gives a Kickstarter for a story. Um, and just to go back to what, um, what what Bard was asking earlier, I'm I'm he's asking, you know, are you saying you shouldn't have multiple books until you reach level five? No, not necessarily. I'm just saying these other levels before level five, there's different things that I want authors to focus on or different things that I think are important to focus on. Um, I had bundles after I wrote three books. I was okay, great, time to bundle. You know, I was a level two author at the time and that bundle sold okay. But the point was I wasn't really thinking in terms of how can I merchandise my product line? That's a level five thought. That's a level level five level five line of reasoning. How can I merchandise all this stuff that I've got? I'm already writing at you know 100% capacity. Um, I'm already doing business stuff at 100% capacity. I'm already you know I'm not going to take time from any of these things. So, is there anything I can do to extract as much potential out of this line of products I've already built? And the answer is at level five, it's to start really thinking in terms of bundling, rebundling, taking some books and ones maybe have my Mason Dixon and Harvey Bennett mashup bundle. I don't you know, I could write like a short little tie in why they're connected, you know, whatever the, the point is, you can think of these things in a creative way, um, or add ons are a good thing, you know, recommendation engines, if you have a, if you're segmenting your list or using multiple lists for your readers, then you can easily say, you know, hey, um, you've bought all of these books, I don't know if you know it or not, but I've got this other series over here you'd be amazed at how many people don't know you have another series. Um, and so just things like thinking in terms of the add-ons and bundles, that's really the corporate, what I call the corporate level, level five. All right. So we are now on one, two, three, four, five, six. Level six, products and expansions. <sighs> Expansion. 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 I love this. I love this level. This is, this is a level I'm on and I've kind of been not stuck here, but this is where I am right now. Um, and I, again, I designed, I just made this all up. So if you're not resonating with it, then, you know, just make it up for yourself and shut up. Um, my, my goal with level six was all about coming up with ways of creating products around your series that have nothing to do with books or, or in a sense, they don't have, they're not actual books. They're just things besides books. So you mentioned like ties, um, you know, if you got a character that wears a bow tie, that that's, that's a perfect opportunity to sell out and make bow ties with your character stuff on it and give them everybody at conference. And, you know, and for example, like this, this probably is more of a level six sort of thing. It's not, it's a book, but it's not really, um, related like to super the, niche related. Yeah, to exactly. It's more, it's going to resonate with people who like making and, and mixology and making drinks more than it will with people who read crime fiction. So um, I'm, I'm also going to add fun. in Harry Potter, right? That's they've exactly got, right. they've got, you know, each house has their whole line of the scarves. You know, all the characters have their wands now in full size and mini versions. I know this right. because my daughter loves them. Um, and, you know, they've got the owl, they've got the this, they've got the tree thing. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, absolutely. it's like it's everywhere. So, anyway. Yeah, yeah actually, right. yeah. I'm wearing a shirt from Galaxy's Edge right now. Boom. Look at that. Victory Company with the. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, um, that's exactly what it is. You know, uh, uh, Olivier Gay, uh, I, th I think I have him in my car right now. But I started, I got tired of business cards because it just reminds me of my like business world background. Um, so at conferences, I give out coast coasters, like drink coasters. They're just circles with Mason Dixon stuff on it naturally. Nice. Um, See, but that works for you because he's a bartender. It's totally. fantastic. It, it's, it's perfect, right? And bartenders are like, oh, I love it. I'm going to give them away. And you know, and it's gotten me all of like zero sales, I'm sure. But the point is, it's just a way to expand what we're already doing. That didn't cost me anything. Um, I own the printing company that made them, so it didn't cost me anything to print them. Like it's just a really easy way of getting in there and and making your your series again. If you're at level five already and you're working to get to the next level, you've already got sales. You're already selling eBooks. You're already selling audiobooks. You're doing okay. You may not be a millionaire. I'm definitely not a millionaire. But the point is. 
you're not thinking about, you shouldn't be thinking about this kind of stuff realistically, like until you're at level four or five. Um, and so at level five, yeah, you're still writing again. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to stop writing and now just become a coaster maker. Um, but this is where I've got a couple on my website, like Harvey Bennett is a park ranger and he's a recluse. And so he doesn't really like people. And so I have a water bottle you can buy that just says, leave me alone on the side. And then Harvey Bennett books.com. Um, you know, it's just fun. It's one of those things where I'm not trying to make the best water bottle in the world and make BPA friendly or whatever. Uh, things are, or it's not an organic free range water bottle, but I don't want to get into that sort of thing. That's not why GMO can approve PETA. GMO and approve. <laughs> yeah. It is actually a free range water bottle. Um, cage free. But the point, you know, the point is like, you start to think in terms of what are some other products I can make? What are toys, games, RPGs? Somebody mentioned exactly. Um, the snot inscribed stuff that does bespoke soundtracks. This is exactly a level six sort of thing. Um, Mal, it, she's killing it. She goes to conferences dressed as her characters with 3d printed guns and all kinds of awesome stuff like that. And then you can buy her CDs there. And um, I recommend it cause I made them. They're really awesome. But that's the whole point of this level is these are things that are related to her series, but they're not books. Um, and that's what level six is all about. And that's, that's what corporate does, right? They exactly. put something corporate, out yeah. and they're like, do people like it? Do people all right? Roll the stuffed animals, roll the other thing, roll all right. the things, the blankets, the pillowcases, right? The cards. Right. Yeah. Jay yeah. Spider said, I have book markers with the cover pictures of my 10 books from one series. Yeah, that's awesome. You're paying so much for your covers already. Why not put them to use in another way? Put them everywhere. Get a tattoo of your book covers. Put it on your butt cheek. Like, you know, I mean, like us as authors, like the first thing I did, what did I do? I got a bigger print of my cover, put that sucker in a frame, and I hung it on my wall. Yeah. Right. I mean, you Absolutely. could make whole posters of that cover art. You've you've paid for it probably. Um, and you can you can, you know, as as a Barbie movie, um, Christmas movie says, just give it away. You know. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. It, depending I was on just gonna quote that, yeah. All right. He's my new favorite. <laughs> right, here, here. Well, this dude, wait, over here. God, back. see, yeah. it's all backwards. All right. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. That's exactly what I did too. I had three books out and with, I have, you know, graphic design background. And so what I did was I put the entire text, hundred thousand words in InDesign. I want to like do that. Five font and then had the title was written out in block big, but then the, the text all wrapped around it and it just looks like a, you know, bunch of dots from far away. Giant. but. Thing it of text really cool, cool yeah it was really cool kind of newsprinty sort of uh sort of thing i want to um, do that people actually offered to buy them and they were like hey this is really cool i want to hang it up and i was like oh, that's weird and creepy but that's because i was at level three and i didn't think that was what people wanted but you'd be surprised everybody <laughs> all right so you can get creative once you know once you have a product once you have seen what this product can do once you've found an audience once you're at the point of i don't know what else i can do now you're expanding, you're creating things other than books, which right. can then lead you into level seven, level seven. personal access. Personal access. <laughs> you like that, Maleko? I'm going to do that from now on. Um, yeah, so at level six, you've, uh, and just from what you just said, Kayleen, it, it's very obvious that at this level, you're very busy. You've got a lot going on. Your time is very valuable. You realize that now. People buy stuff that you put out, and that's really cool and everything. So at level six, you start to realize if I'm going to get to the next level, instead of worrying about spending all my time making other things that then people can buy, I might be valuable enough that people will just pay me for time directly, whether that's through consulting. If you're doing nonfiction, this is such an obvious thing for nonfiction. This is where you start to do consulting. This is where you start to get paid speaking gigs. Um, you're helping people in fiction world. It can look like that too. You know, how to write better. People start to recognize your name a little bit more. Um, how to market books better. You know, and that's, again, I said I'm at level six. This is how I'm trying to get to level seven. I want to actually get more involved in the nonfiction side so that people will pay me to come show up at conferences and look pretty and sign things. And you no, know, I'm just kidding. To, to, to talk and to help and do workshops and all those things that I really enjoy doing. But if you're a fiction author, you can still level up to level seven by offering fans access to you directly. Um, this works best typically in person, but you can do online events. Um, that's certainly something that, that has worked for people in the past. Like Alessandra Torre, I think she does a lot of this kind of stuff, but you know, in per, I mean, there's nothing better than getting to sit down with your favorite writer 
and just drink a beer with them or coffee and just hang out and just do what they want to do. I'm trying, um, we're moving to Hawaii, so I don't think I'll be able to do this, but I'm trying to get to Boston area like New Hampshire area. Um, because one of my favorite thriller authors, Jeremy Robinson has like a, a hangout that he does with like four other people, some writer. Friends. And so he charges like 250 bucks or something. And you just get to go up, you have to get there and you have to figure out a place to stay. But then that, that money goes into a pot where we all just split it up and he goes and takes us to places he wants to go and drink the beer he wants to drink and eat at the places he wants to eat. And I'm like, this is totally me. I would love to do that. He's one of my favorite authors and just to hang out with him would be awesome. 250 bucks is nothing. And now most people that aren't at this level are thinking that's insane. Who, no one's going to pay me for my time, but that's just not, it's just patently untrue. You're just not at the right level yet. And so you get to level six and you start to think, man, I, I think people would actually pay a hundred bucks or whatever to come, you know, hang out and grab dinner for a couple nights in a row and just pick my brain. So that's what level seven is all about is um, giving them access, giving your readers access, giving your fans access to you directly. And like I said, if this really freaks you out, um, do it online. You can do that kind of stuff online. You can have an outlining weekend where you, you've got some fans that want to write books. They just don't know what the first step is. Give it to them. Help them write an outline or something or whatever the thing is. And that reminds me of a little protocol thing I picked up at the Superstars uh, seminar. If you do ask an author out to a meal, be ready to pay the bill. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> be ready to split the check be ready to pay their bill too, because they've, you know, they're spending their time on you. They've, they've sure. if, you, if you offer and invite them, just, just be ready. You are more than welcome to always pay the bill. If I take you to dinner. So <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. No, I mean, my dad growing up, he always told me the same thing. He's like, if you ever go to dinner with someone, just be, be able to pay the bill. You know, even if you don't expect to just, you don't want to be stuck washing dishes. That's, that's a more, that's a much more awkward way to end the night. <laughs> um, I think that's totally true. Yeah. If you're with someone who um, you're looking up to, you respect, or you're, you're, it's a mentorship sort of relationship where you're trying to gain something from them. Um, the least you can do is buy them a meal, buy them a beer or whatever, that kind of thing. Um, chances are I'll, I'll end up putting the bill. Cause I, I like, I, the, I value food like, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, but like, that's something, that's a way I appreciate people is saying, Hey, thanks for coming out. Let me buy you a beer or something. So. And if you don't want to buy the whole meal, you'd be like, hey, can I buy you a drink right. and sit and chat with you for a while? If they want to order food, that's on them. You there bought you them go. a drink. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> Specific, the words, the words matter. All right. Now, I know what y'all are thinking. How can there be another level? How can mm. we go from books for sale, other platforms, going wide, special editions? Bundles and add-ons, products and expansions, personal access. What could be next? I'm going to tell you, it's level eight, brand platform, which to me is a little interesting because out of the gate, I keep hearing you need to focus on your brand. You need to focus on your brand. And this title alone is saying you're not quite there yet until you've come I up. I hear what you're saying. I, yeah, I hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm taking it from a different perspective that you've been building your brand now right. at level eight or when you're in at level seven, trying to get to level eight, your brand is now able to pay you back and pay dividends to you. And the way that works is you're now doing all the things you've done before. Most likely you're still writing. Cause that's how you got into this mess in the first place. You probably don't want to give that up. Um, but most of those other things that you're doing are sort of extra, right? They're, they're just, do we still stay extra anymore? Do we still do this anymore? Extra. That's so extra. Yeah, that's so um, extra. I'm, I'm going to do, it. I'm going to bring it back. So like all those other things are so extra. So now you hire other people to do them. I'm going to start. I'm, if I meet you in real, I'm going to be like, dude, IRL. Do we still say IRL? Meet space? <laughs> Hashtag meet space. Um, we will meet in meet space. I'm sure we probably already did. I just don't remember. I apologize. I'm super important and busy all the time. Um, level eight, <laughs> your brand is is when you've got a brand and, again, and the big ones that we all know, Marvel, DC, Star Wars, you know, whatever, Hunger Games. But there's all kinds of smaller ones. I mentioned Mallory Cooper. She has a an, an incredible brand. She wants to build the largest, um, what is the word she used, the descriptor? I can't remember, but it's the largest universe, like tie-in universe of sci-fi ever written. Which I think is an incredible goal um, and she's going to probably do it like tomorrow because she's super crazy fast at writing. But the point is at that level, now you've built the brand. The brand is working. It's just that um, you're, you're outsourcing some of those 
lower level things that you were doing before. So all those bundles that you were working on uploading to your website and making pictures, you're not doing that anymore. You've got a, a web guy to do that or a web girl to do that. Um, all those, you know, baby Yodas that you were selling custom on Etsy because your Star Wars Mandalorian series, which this is the way. Um, sorry, I know I said it. Kill me. This is the way. Oh my god. There you we know, go. At I'm least we have to see Wait, no, we didn't. Okay. Baby Yoda obviously did really. Everybody wanted Baby Yoda. So there's a there's a lady on Etsy selling six hundred dollar Baby Yoda dolls that I guess she like makes. Or I don't know. Probably doesn't sound illegal to me. But the person who created Baby Yoda isn't the one making those dolls. So the person who created, you know, um, Captain America obviously isn't making Captain America dolls. But they have a team in place creating all those things. Excuse me, merchandising, right? Disney makes one movie, but then the Disney stores sell all the stuff that people make related to that movie so that Disney can focus on making the next movie. That's what level eight's all about. You're going to speak at conferences. You're doing the things that only you can do literally your time. Like you can't do all of those things. And so the things that, you know, you literally have to be at the conference to speak at, you literally have to write the next book um, unless you're going to ghost write it, which would be, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you've hired a team now at level seven and, and to get to level eight, you, you've started to lead that team and taught them how you want them to run your brand. Um, so that's why I call it the kind of brand expansion sort of level. Um, it's all about team building. It's all about leadership. You're doing all the same things you were doing before, but instead of thinking in terms of what can I do that's so extra, you know, that I was doing before, you're now thinking, who can I bring on that can take this one piece from me? And and they can do it 80% at least as good as I can, and that's totally worth it for me. Um, I'm going to let them go run with it and just take it their, their own direction. Yeah, and Anderley is brilliant at this. This is exactly why he's level eight. Michael Anderley just kills in this arena. He's an, an exceptional leader. Um, he's, and he's like a level 18 eight. He's like a level know, 18 so. eight. Exactly. <laughs> right. So that, that's but, why I call it brand stuff. You're working on your brand the whole way through, but this is where your brand really starts to pay dividends back to you. So, I mean, this is for those authors who are really looking at writing as a career. You know, how can this you know, be the thing that pays all the bills, that, that is the thing that pays for that, um, that vacation that, you know, Hey, let's just go have dinner. Like in my realm of thinking, you know, I can't just go out to go have dinner. I have to, you know, plan for that, you know? So authoring, I eventually would like to be able to pay for all that stuff. Um, you know, once, once you get to that level eight, you know, you're sitting here and you're writing and you're like, oh man, I need to get on the Instagram. I need to get on the Facebook. I need to check my, my Amazon ads. You could have a personal assistant for that. Right. You know, you could hire somebody to make the ads, you know, and they're just like, Hey, can you, maybe you still double check what the, what the verbiage is for the ads, but right. they're writing it. They're finding people to write it and it's getting uploaded. It's getting published someone else is handling that and you're just pumping out words and doing other things. Totally. Um, yeah. Yeah. In the nonfiction realm, uh, Pat Flynn of smart passive income.com is kind of an inspiration to a lot of people in the, in the whole community. I met him out in Honolulu a couple years ago and we had coffee and everything, but this is exactly like, he's the kind of person I want to become as far as the, like he's genuine, he's authentic. Nothing about him has really changed throughout over the years, you know? Um, but now he has a whole team of people that are running his show for him in a sense, you know, he's not the one on the phone or on the, on the, on the horn trying to get people um, to pay him to come out to these conferences. He's got an assistant that does that. Um, and so that's sort of the, the level where you're start to, starting to think, Hey, what's most important for Pat Flynn? What's most important for me is to just write the next book or write this next blog post. Only I can do that. That's why I've gotten this brand so far. Um, and it's not a, it's not an arrogance thing. It's just, there's a reason your fans have signed up to hear from you for all seven of these levels, you don't want to change that. You know, you, you have to keep that going because that's what they're here for. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to be the one sending all of your emails or reading all of your emails um, or posting on Facebook or, you know, Hey, I just came out with this new book. Like there's a whole social media team that can do that. Um, so that's kind of the, that's the purpose of level eight is just that leadership, that team building. Of course, there's lots of areas to grow because leadership and team building isn't always easy. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's it's where you start to put your, okay, you've got editors you work with, your cover designers you work with. How can we get them to just feel like they're part of a team and when we're leading them more than just giving them work as often as we can? 
Now, let's say there's an author out there who um, like hears all of this and says, but all I want to do is just write a great book. Um, I do want to get it in front of readers and get it sold and get it to them, but I'm not, I'm not interested in the branding. I'm not interested in the producting, the merchandising. I just want to write. Are, is there anything else they can do besides building their own author platform? Are there any other avenues that you're aware of that they could kind of go to where they can just focus on the writing and let someone else do the marketing for them? Sure. I mean, I think in terms of like, I don't know who said it, but some, some smart person said something about like everybody is, has a brand already, whether you like it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not. You know, if you're just the guy that's like, I just want to write poetry and hide in my bunker. Well, that's your brand. Like it's already there. Like, you your just, bunker guy. <laughs> you just didn't decide that was your brand. I think it's the same thing with authors that just want to write their book and they don't want to do anything else um, to market it and all that stuff. That's sort of what you've chosen. Um, now you can, try to go the route of traditional publishing and hope that you're going to strike it rich by having a whole team of people that will just do it for it. They'll bring the level eight success to you, the level one author. Um, that is absolutely possible as a goal, as a system to work toward. I think it's a little bit like shooting for the moon. Um, it's probably not likely you'll get there or I don't know what the quote is, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say? It's probably unlikely that you'll, that you'll do that right out the gate. So those authors, I typically say, well, that's great. In the meantime, while you're waiting for them to come knocking and, and do all that stuff for you, if you really are serious about going up levels and you just don't want to do the work, you should probably write another book. And then they come back and say, well, okay, but you, now you should probably write another book. Mm -hmm. And eventually what the, the point is, I'm getting them to realize, okay, well, you can hope for the, I'm still hoping for that huge movie deal that I can just mm -hmm. retire. Right. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and just bust my ass and try to get this stuff to work on my own. Um, at some point, you just have to realize that you got to put the work in to get the results you, you hope to get. If you hope to just get nothing out of it, then don't put any work in and you'll you'll be happy. You'll actually be really happy. And maybe that's your definition of success. But for most people listening to this, most people who, who listen to what I have to say, they want more than that. They want to have some success with their stuff and they know that it takes some work. They're just lost in what to do and, and how to find the next step to take. And so these levels are really just, just geared toward the people who are like, hey, I don't want to just write a book and and give it to my mom and, and dad and say, Hey, I wrote a book and I'm, I feel really great about that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's what I originally did with my first book. I just had other ideas and I thought I would, maybe I'll write it. And then they started paying me more money. And I was like, well, this is better than, you know, the job that I had at the time this is better than doing this. So maybe I can make this work. And so we just get into this, into this mode of what's next. What, how can I make this worthwhile? You know, I don't know if that really answers your question or not, but uh, I, yeah, I, you define success for yourself. And if you achieve it, great. Don't listen to me. You've already achieved success. I think, yeah, some, some authors that are in that boat, I just want to write the book and put it out there and, and like, I don't really want to do anything else, but then they're just like, they sell a few copies, you know, they get the bug, they get the itch, yeah. they write another book. And before you know it, you're in level three and you're right. just like, how can I do more? And, you know, it sneaks up on you and you don't even realize it. And that's exactly how it happens. I mean, I probably went full time when I was between level four and five. Um, most of it was, yeah, I like that level nine, how to take over the world. Uh, that, that'll be the, you, that'll be the, the sequel to this book. Um, well, I'll, it'll be like $99 though. Um, hint, hint. That's, that's how you take over the world. Get people to buy a $99 ebook. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what it is. Like I went full time between like level four and five. So it doesn't really matter what level you're on. I think you can sort of do things out of order. You can, you can be more successful at certain levels or make more money. I should say. I know we're so level. over, but there was, I think, I can't remember who said it, but someone had a question earlier. If you misstep a step or kind of like flabagarg a step, hmm. do you, should you go back to level one or should you keep pushing forward? Like what do you do if you've overstepped <laughs> or screwed up? A step essentially well newsflash um you're gonna screw up everybody screws up everybody makes these mistakes everybody does all these every single author me you know you two like everyone listening has made a mistake in some way um either big or small talk to me about all the times i've paid bookbub and forgot to set the price <laughs> no. because it's happened more than once well that shouldn't happen more than once <laughs> anybody. but i'm just that stupid that i oh i'll go do it later one time i was at disney world and got a bookbub and i was like oh, i'll do it later and then it ran and they were like, Hey, we couldn't run your ad because your price was like six ninety nine. 
the point is you make mistakes and you do things out of order. These levels, again, these are mine. Um, I'm not trying to say that every single author is in one of these levels. I mean, when I was writing it, that's, that was my goal, but I also recognize that like, Hey, maybe, you know, like, um, like, uh, what was his name? Bert? No, it wasn't Bert, not Walt. Somebody's name, Bard. Um, <laughs> you know, they're uh, oh, sorry, man. I was, Oh, sorry. Um, they'll tell you you're not. You know, no, I just instantly saw like bundles. My point is. Anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, right. That's oh, what I was, oh, I was thinking. That <laughs> I'll find it. But the, you know, the thing is, you may not be at just because you're making bundles doesn't necessarily mean you're at level four or whatever the bundles is. You know, or level five. It it doesn't. It you may actually be at level three. Um, in in terms of what my made up definitions. Yeah, just because you have a bundle doesn't mean you're actually doubling down and trying to figure out ways to to create bundles. And you've got all those other ones, those other levels below it in check. So th that it takes some self-reflection. It takes some actual, I, I put this in the talk, but again, didn't get to it here or in the book anyway. But you have to write this stuff down. It has to be somewhere where you can visualize these things and turn them not into goals, but into systems. That's how you level up. It's not just saying, I want to do this. Um, even if it's a realistic, like what smart goal we say in business world, you know, the, the achievable, measurable, all that stuff. Um, um, one of my favorite authors, Scott Adams, the guy that does Dilbert, he's got a book called how to, how to fail at everything and still win big. Hmm. Um, and his whole purpose is that goals are for losers. Systems are for winners. And so that's, that's the whole point of all these leveling up things is don't just have a goal of getting to level eight, have a system in place. Because if your goal is to get to level eight and you don't get it for five years, you're living five years in a perpetual state of failure because you're not at level eight. But if you have a system that says, I'm going to write X words every day, I'm going to focus on coming up with a new product in some way, shape, or form, whether it's a book or a bundle or a Yoda um, every month, then you can break those goals down and they become systems. And you can achieve that system every single day and you can be a winner every day. And if you don't write 2000 words, Maybe you're a failure for one day, but then you jump back on it and you write 4,000 the next day or whatever the thing is. So that we're is going over, but. hugely, hugely important, you know, and it's bringing back Michael Anderley. It's what he says. You have the mountain, you know, there's the peak that you want to be at. There's that huge goal that you want to reach, but that goal is filled with, you know, climbing and you know, scouring across the creek and, yeah. you know, getting scratched up by the bushes and the trees and the forest and everything else, you know, you, you've got to see those, those ledges and those steps to get closer to that goal. And every single step that you take is a win, right? you know, which is why you've done your vomit draft and you've gotten from A to Z and you've finished it. That's a huge win. You've, you've written a book now go back in and clean it up. Yeah, you know, you, you've got your cover. That's a huge win. Every step you take is a win. And so many authors need to realize and, you know, take that in and, and, and give themselves that congratulations. Because I, I really believe a lot they don't. They don't give themselves enough congratulations for the small things. Oh, that's because so, they yeah. haven't reached the peak yet. But yeah. the peak is the dream. You know, but it's it's the journey that really matters. Yeah, Neil Gaiman's whole talk was, um, you know, he gave a commencement address about the mountain, and the whole point is moving closer to moving towards your mountain. You know, does this take me closer to my mountain, or does this take me away? And he kind of pitched it in, in a way that was more like, hey, should I take this job, or should I not, or should I go be full time? And the whole point was, does it move you closer to your mountain? Um, so it implies that you have to know what your mountain is, that you have mm -hmm. that goal, that ultimate. Here's where I want to be, um, but it also implies a system. You know, the system is. Is what I'm doing right now systematized, like systematizingly wise, totally a word, just don't don't ask. Um, bring me closer to my mountain. Bring me to that goal. Yeah. Kevin Tumlins and I, uh, early on in our both our uh, fiction careers, you know, both like we we had a actual like hard date every week where we would celebrate little victories. Um, because we were so frustrated with not winning anything that it turned out when we started focusing specifically on what did we what did we do this week? Like what did we accomplish? there was way more to like take a shot of whiskey about than we thought. Um, so that, I mean, that, that's a good accountability thing you can do. Get that writing buddy and just be like, Hey, I'm going to call you every week, 8 a.m. on Thursday morning or whatever. And we're going to talk about the things that I, I won, the things that I did this week. Um, so that's uh that's one thing you can do there. Yeah. 
uh, Bart. It is Bart. I apologize, Bart. I Bart of today will now be known as Bart. Bert. Bert. <laughs> Bert of today. All right. Oh my goodness, Dick. We could probably talk for. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. Minutes. No, you're good because we still have people in chat. They're still asking questions. They're still engaged. So I just kept going. I don't know, Lauren. You're probably over there exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm just soaking it all in. Soaking it, it all in. in. That's right. All right. Thank you so much, Nick. We do eventually have to cut it off at some point because I still have to do the audio for this. I, girl, I hate when I get behind. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. Uh, and I just lost my train of thought because that happens. That's a thing that I do. My brain moves faster than my mouth. All right. Mm. All right. Viewers, listeners, make sure you hit that subscribe button, smash the bell, do all the things, leave us comments. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you think. We want to deliver you the topics and uh, the experts that you want to hear from because we can do so because we will do what we can for you. And already. Uh, be sure to check us out next week. We're going to talk about reading, writing, everything in between right here on Keystroke Mediums, The Writer's Journey.